Rangers of the Amulet Rejection 17, maybe an 18, who knows? And um, I am the also inventor of Supreme Technology Screen Paints. Um, all right, so today we're going to be doing a demonstration, a panel demonstration, showing you how easy it is to paint in um, using our Supreme Black Ambulite Rejection 12. A lot of people have been acquiring about Ambulite Rejection 17s. Uh, those 17 technologies are not going anytime soon. As a matter of fact, there could be a pushback for the blue. The blue could have a pushback all the way into probably around somewhere around maybe March, maybe March, somewhere around April, somewhere around that time, because we want to get these ready, the 17th, we want to get them ready around somewhere around um, before summertime hits, because I do have some special screen paints. I told you there's only two interesting screen paints we're putting in there. One of them is actually customized for outside for people want to do blow up projection screens and pretty much anything you want to paint outside, you want to take a screen outside. I'm actually designing one for a pop-up gazebo that I plan to buy this summer. So. What I want to show you in this video, and I show a lot, a lot of people, I don't know how old you may be, but when I was coming up in my era, not I'm saying my era, that'd be too far back, around, uh, let's say, February of 2000, 2010, 2014, if you don't remember a projector called a Galaxy, it was made by a company called Dreamland, 737, 747, and 757, at that particular time, this is where the YouTube paint came into display, because at that particular time, there was no black diamond, there was no... Uh, ambient light rejection, none of that stuff did not even exist. Everybody was doing demonstrations in the dark and we're using one particular projector, which was a pretty reasonable projector for around $200. So I'm going to show you a video on how screens had to be painted way back, way back um, when um, people were painting in borders. You actually, Goose Screen had a screen paint and it had a border paint. So if you see something that's black paint, it's not exactly what you think it is. It's actually called border paint, which is designed to put a border on your screen. Now, the day's traditions, you really, depending on what you have, okay? So with our technology, borders are not needed due to the fact that our screens automatically are black or the dark gray. If you look at the um, black silvers, black silver can turn dark when they're being hit with contrast. They can pull up a border with no problem whatsoever, which I need to do a border on that screen with today too to show you that effect. All right, so let me show you the tradition of what people had to go through if you wanted to paint a projection screen in your home. This is what you literally had to go through if you never saw one of these videos before. And I said, take the time to go check out a goose screen. It was not something that was easy to do. It, it took some time and you did a lot of mistakes in the process of doing it. So let me go back to the beginning. So you can see this is a setup video. And there's another company, Goose Screen. Goose Screen has a video that they do. I mean, you can sit through it. It's up to you. I already did it already because I had to do it for research. But this is dirty how you had to do it. So you basically would, uh, you're supposed to project the image in. So you project the image in first. And then you actually take the tape. I like to go one inch away from it. But if you're putting a border on it, then it's different. You have to be precisely to the size of the screen you're actually painting. So I told you when I told you back in the day, hey, how you doing? When I told you back in the day that um, light gray screen paints, white screen paints, these were all freaking the rage. Everybody had these. This is what people did. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm not in the uh, room for teaching people. That's not my field. It's an up and down robot formation. This is how you had to do it because the products they made then uh, we're known for streaking like crazy. So you had to do it in an up and down robot formation. Something that would have taken you, in my demonstrations that takes me no time to do, would have taken you a while to do. So now you see I'm putting the border in, so you have to put a second piece of tape to do your border because the border was needed back then. You had to have a border. It's very important that you had that border. See how he has a second border coming in between? That was very important because borders were designed, people don't know. Everything now is borderless. But borderless were designed so the screen doesn't bleed out. So if the screen bleeds past the actual size of the screen, the border is to keep it in control. So that's what you needed. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So right here, as you can see, you had to have border paint. So you had to have two versions. You had that one was the actual screen and then the other one had to be border paint. And this is how it was done. We're done. You guys want to show him popping the popcorn and lights had to be out. There was no such thing as doing demonstrations like I'm doing right now. That didn't exist. 
That's why I say in this decade in time, you know, how far we've come in technology. Projectors are freaking insane on what they can do now. Compared to when I was coming up to what projectors do, projectors are freaking insane. So if the technology and projectors are so crazy advanced, how come the screens haven't caught up yet? So that's what I wanted to show you. Also want to show you, these were the projectors back in the day, and I'm going to show you how the environments were. This is exactly how the environments were back in the day. It was called a uh, Galaxy, 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 Galaxy. Remember that. Hold up a minute. Oh, got the wrong area right here. Uh, Galaxy. Let me just grab this real quick. They were called Galaxies and look them up. It was actually a projector that everybody was buying. Like I said, projectors at the time were crazy expensive. And people were just were trying to get whatever they could just to have a screen of their own. At that time, I think they were using it on Xbox 360s. So Galaxy DG, uh, I think it was a 737. Uh, projector. Projector. And there you go. They, I look them up. These were these projectors that came over from China. They were around 200 bucks. This is the environment these things were set into. So you had to be in the dark. You didn't have a choice with these. And this is somebody right here showing their setup. They're doing, uh, they got a 737 right there. So they're using a 737 on theirs right there. And this is what is the setup. There was no such thing. Like I said, you weren't going to be coming here gaming like this. is virtually impossible. That was not going to happen. You had to be in the dark. And I remember that because I remember I had a, I bought a BenQ MS500 when I first started developing screen paints. Yes, I was in the freaking dark. You look at some of my earlier videos, I was in the dark most of the time. So that was your environment. So that's why a lot of people had gripes over projectors because they're like, man, there's no way in the world I want a projector. You don't have to be in the dark all day and this and the other. That was the biggest gripe about projectors. The color would wash out, um, contrast levels off. You would just better off with a TV. So people had projectors in this area were joked. Even if you had a high-end projector, you were still joked due to the fact that you could not use it in the fully lit environment. You couldn't really argue about that. Goodbye. We always get them in here. So that was the whole problem right from there. You had to be in the dark all the time. As you can see, that's an Xbox 360, um, what do you call it, um, display. Now, doing this? No, there's no way in the world. This is why I was telling you that, you know, there is no such thing as you should never ever be sitting in the dark. With the technology we have in projectors today, there's no way in the world you should be ever be sitting in the dark. And so his windows are blocked out. You can see objects on the other side with no problem. Uh, we're actually having a sale website, so I don't know if I'm putting any information in, in the um in the uh the information in there but yeah you can go to the website you can order right from there right now we, we're already done for the day uh we already processed our orders orders went through yesterday so next ship out date is going to be friday so you see the difference in the environments this is why i said if you're watching demonstrations in the dark you really 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 should not be doing that at all period not with the technology we have in projectors now it's not how big a screen you can have. It's pretty much how big of a wall you have to put the screen to begin with. And then on that, it also too calculates on the projector. How big of a screen is the projector going to be able to produce? So you have to look at that. Because some people get like older, ultra short throw projectors like the um, Epson 585Ws and the 585 W's can max out at 80. That's basically about it because they were never designed to be um, home theater projectors. They were designed for schools and offices and businesses. So they only max out at 80. Once you pass 80, then your, your image is going to start pixelating and becoming fuzzy. So it depends on your environment. I suggest before you go out and spend the money on our screen paint, I suggest you basically map out your environment to see exactly how much room you have. And then from there, basically um, go to Projector Central and see exactly what kind of screen you can have. Because you don't want to, people make that mistake all the time. They'll go out 
and they'll look at their wall and they'll estimate the size of their screen and then they'll get the projector over there and find that the projector cannot fit the screen because you may need ultra short throw, you may need short throw, or you may need long throw, depending on your environment. I have 18, I have about 19 feet back in here, so my uh, projector can max out at 135. Where downstairs in my theater room, I have maybe about 11 feet, so I have to use short throw in there. So it depends on the environment on which you're in. So I said before you go out and do anything, check your area first and see what you can get first out of your area. Because you don't want to be sitting there with the distance and a short wall. You know what the distance and the short wall is, right? That means you got the distance to pull back and get a massive screen, but you ain't got the wall to fill out the screen. That's, that becomes a headache. Or maybe you may have the wall and just don't have the distance. Either way, you know what I mean? You have to get short throw in there. So map out your area first before you go down that road. I would suggest doing that first. Because there is, like I said, there was a customer who I was helping out with a project with his setup, and he built the entire theater. The theater was gorgeous, man. He did the walls, hand carved um, designs around the screen, and then he went to put the projector, and he realized that he had the 30 feet to pull the projector back. He just didn't have the size of the wall to accommodate the distance from the projector. And they had to had two choices. Either he was going to have a short throw in there, which had been right up on top of the screen, which it threw away. It actually just wrecked the environment completely because it was designed to be a, a, a vintage movie theater. And you got this big projector standing up in the front. Like, that's going to throw away the entire environment right there. Or you can just use a mid-throw and then have it right in the middle. You, you don't want a mid-throw projector right in the middle. You know, you want it in the back. We had the cabin and everything set up. So, I mean, the only choice he had basically out of that is he had to go in and get our black invisible technology, tear out the entire screen, which he spent a lot of money doing, put in plexiglass, and then he put an ultra short though behind the wall and he was able to project rear projection and he did it that way. That's why I said check your environment first before you go down that road because it can end up being a bit of a nightmare if you don't. Let me see. I'm trying to find something here. We're going to do a paint on demonstration day. 4K screens. Oh, that freaking worked. Usually that never freaking works. I never get that to work. Hold on for a minute. All right. That never freaking works for me. Let me see. 8K demonstrations. Why the heck does a PS4? Freaking voice recognition system works way better than the freaking fire stick that I had downstairs. Wow, I, that tells you something right there. Clearly, they need to basically talk to Sony about reconditioning their freaking hardware because that just popped up with no problem whatsoever. contrast or not you're supposed to be able to pull that demonstration in a fully lit environment with no problem and i just don't understand back in the day that was back in the day um nah no it ain't and i'm not gonna get into a discussion over that i'm not i'm not having that discussion today but it's not. I own five of them. I have a fire stick for every or just about every projector I have in this house. So no, it's not. And I have I actually had the tall boy version of it downstairs. It's not. Mine got on my nerves so much I had to unplug it. All right, so there we go right there. So this is how your screen is supposed to react in a fully lit environment. And as you said before, this is old. This is back in the day. So you really can't put a strike against one because, like I said, this was a tradition. You had to be in the dark. How you had to paint your screen, you had to have a border around it because that kept the screen from bleeding out. You know, you had to go through all that. But like I said, with the technology we had today, there is no excuse. Um, and my projector, keep in mind, up there, my 505 up there, my big boy Christy, is, was manufactured. I think they discontinued it in 2012. So in 2012, this one mine was discontinued. So, like I said, with the with the ability of what we have in projectors today, with the technology we have, we have smart projectors. You go on there, you surf the internet, do it, all this technology we have, but yet people are still sitting in the dark, and you're not supposed to be doing that. All right, so let's go downstairs and paint the screen in, as we saw in the demonstration here with the other fellow here. 
it back to him real quick. And you got to check out another one's made by Goose Screen. Goose Screen has the the original paint on demonstration where you have to go up and down in a robot formation to do it. But there is no such thing as black screens. That black screens are unheard of. They never even existed. Like I said, at that particular time, I think the black diamond took 11 years. When I talked to that fellow, he told me it took about 11 years to develop black diamond technology. And you got some people out there making their own black screen paints. And like I said, just because you can get a screen to produce a contrast level on a black screen, that doesn't mean anything. That means nothing. Any black surface is going to be to produce it. You're going to have to show a lot of crazy tech. Like that 17 we have now, so there's even 12s. 12s, you can put five or six screens against it that are lighter than 12s. And 12s will blend right into the screen with no problem. Because they're designed to pull high white levels. And this is a 12 right there. Mighty Brighty, here we go. Mighty Brighty, I, I don't even think they're in business anymore. Mighty Brighty, Mighty Brighty, this is how old it is. This video is in 4.3. This is Mighty Brighty. These are the screen paints around. There's Mighty Brighty, there was Goose Screen. What was another one? There's another one too, besides that one. This is Mighty Brighty. These are the steps you had to go through. So step one, you had to make sure the per perfect was smooth. Everything was a lot of sanding involved. There was a lot of freaking sanding. You had to make sure your walls are perfectly sanded down. If you had any imperfection in there, this is how you would put your screen in. This is how you would put your border in. All this is how you had to do it. Now today, for the technology we have, you just roll the screen, you're done. So you watch this, and then we're going to do a paint on demonstration to show you between how technology uh, and screens have changed as in applying them, but still, it's still the same thing. Majority of them are sitting in the dark. So you had to, did you see how he mixed it together? It wasn't a one, it wasn't a one coat process. No, there was a process where you had to mix other paints together in order to make that particular formula. Now, Goose Screen has something like three. They had three something, um, three different processes. So they had three different forms of paints, three different applications, and you had to mix them a certain way. I ought to post this in the bottom of my video. I'm going to the bottom of my video so you can check this out. Sanding, there you go. I told you guys it'd be sanding away. This is what you had to do. There's no such thing. Zip, 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 done. So once you get all that sanded down, this is from Mighty Brighty. I'm going to look Mighty Brighty up. I wonder if they're still around. You had to do your calculations. This is all the stuff you had to do. Mix again. You're mixing the product again. There you go. This is what you had to go through. Apply base twice. Twice. That's just the base. Step four. All that, just a paint of screening. All that, look at that. Mix it again. Apply top coat twice, twice. So you already put in two applications. Now you gotta put in the top coat twice. The base was twice, the top coat is gonna be twice. Bring out the measuring tape, there's the border right there. Told you, if you lived in that area, put in a projection screen was a freaking headache. And then you had to put your border. You're putting around right now. That keeps the screen from bleeding over. There you go. And look how washed out the image looks. So that's what it took to paint a screen. 
And that setup right there would probably cost you, I say probably if you wanted the whole, uh, let me see, Mighty Brighty. I don't want to say anything without basically not having any evidence on it on saying what the price is because that would be disrespectful. Um, let me see. I want it to still in business. Mighty Brighty, Mighty Brighty. I'm looking at their information. There we go. Let's see. Mighty Brighty. We'll just look them up and see if they're still available. This is the website right here, Mighty Brighty. Let me see what they have in their products, our products. For installers, just yes, one for installers. So these are the kits. This is what you have to have for your kit. Right there, all that involved in your kit. This is border, just for your border, so it's not black paint, so don't buy it. If you take a screen paint, anytime you see a black paint, there's a 100% chance it's probably border paint. And you get that home and you paint that in and you find out your screen is too dark because it was never designed for projection screen. It was designed for it. See, this is what you need right here. So you got 10 liters of base coat, which is one, one liter of a coat booster for a uh, base. And then you got eight liters of top coat. This is all the different forms of layers you have to put on to paint one screen. We don't have a price here. Why is there no price? But that is a lot. I mean, that's a lot of base coats you have to put on to apply for a surface. It's right here, as I told you before, border. This is border paint right here. So some people buy, see black paint, like, oh no, I saw black paint for like so-and-so and so. No, that is called border paint. They use that for painting a border around your screen. So you're gonna have two coats to this. You're gonna have, in this one right here, you're gonna have your one liter of base coat, light gray, and one liter of brightness gain 1.1. That is your gain right there. So you gotta put two coats on that. Each coat has to dry, you can't do one over another. So it's a process. Like I said, you got to go through the process. They don't have their prices up here. I don't know why. There's no prices up here. Um, I couldn't give you why I don't have prices, but this is usually what you got to go through. So the reason why we got kicked from ABS forums back in the day is because uh, there was a fellow by the name of Mississippi Man. Mississippi Man had this product that he sold, and in the product he was selling, there was a process you had to go through. First of all, it required a ton of sanding. I mean, a lot of sanding. And keep in mind, if you're sanding, Especially if you're doing goose screens and you're sanding, there are going to be particles in the environment floating around, which means you got to get a special kind of equipment to hook up to your window, like an exhaust system, to blow out any of the particles into another bag. Which means, like I said, you're going to have, to have some way to get rid of those little small particles. If any of those little particles or sand particles land on that screen, you are done. You will be doing that process all over again. That's what you'll have to go through. And in his process, it did require a lot of sanding. And some people would spend weeks sanding their walls down to get them as flat as, as perfectly flat as they possibly can. When we came on there, I threw a timer up, came in there and painted the screen, boom, 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 done. Showed the demonstration off and turned up the light lights on and we got banned for it. Because some people have a bit of a, what you call a God complex disorder and they just didn't like the fact that we came in and we painted that screen that fast. And that's how our band started with ABS forms. Now I'm saying everybody on ABS forums are a bunch of this, that, and the other, they're not. There's some really nice, nice people in there. Some really nice people in there. You can't say the whole site's bad because of one individual. It just, we just happened to bump into the wrong person at the wrong particular time, and they just didn't like what we did, and they considered it to be advertising, which there was no advertising, there was nothing on the video, selling anything at all whatsoever. We read all the rules and instructions before we went in, just to make sure we didn't basically break any rules. <clears throat> so, but they banned us for that particular purpose. Uh, so let me see if we can go out of here real quick if we can find a price on some mighty party real quick 
quick because I gotta go downstairs. I'm waiting for my uh, my more light to come in because I like to paint my screens in the light. So let's see if we can get something here on Mighty Brighty. Mighty Bright's bringing anything up for me here. I'm not pacing. I don't know. Hold on for me, people. I have a little bit of a buggy situation here. Let's grab this real quick right here. There we go. Go back in here. Put it over in here. Put that over there. Put that over there. I need a price. Anybody got a price? Price, price, price. Keyboard. Yeah, sorry about that. I grab my keyboard at the same time. I'm bumping the types out of my stand. So that's why a lot of people back then did not want to paint a screen. Number one, too expensive. Number three, number one, too expensive. Number two, the instructions were freaking blue. I told you, if you ever had deliberate paint in the goose screen before, you'll never forget that experience as long as you live. As a matter of fact, Mighty Brighty Projection Screen Paint Mighty Brighty. They're on YouTube. These guys are on YouTube. I don't know what the price is going to cost for one of these. Mighty Brighty, can I get one here? The price. If they're not flashing the price, and that means that the screens, is, it's got to be still expensive. If they're not flashing that price, and they're, where I'm going at, no one's flashing the price of it. All right, all right, I can't go on this witch hunt all day long. Mighty Brighty Showcase Screens. These are the containers they came in. I'm pretty sure they still sell their products. I see the screen on display. Where's the screen at? See, that's the problem. That's what I had with a lot of these commercials back in the day. They show off so much of the product, but you're not showing off the performance of the screen. This is what people need to see, the performance of the screen. Like when I do a paint demonstration, I do paint and dry. I'll paint the screen, dry it right in front of you, boom, we're done. Put a couple of links at the bottom, that's all, and that's it. We can go purchase the paint, and that's it. We used to do so much talking, he's not showing off the product, he's not she's showing the product off. Where's the performance of the product? And that is a complete and utter fail. You're supposed to be showing off the product. You're supposed to be showing the customer how easy it is to put the paint in and blah blah blah. Let's see what we got going on here. This is 4.3. So we already did this one already. All right, let me show you the mind dummy of, let's see, painting a goose screen. This is goose screen, goose screens were the big boys back in the day. They ran everything. If you wanted a screen painted in, you had to go through goose screen. Now, goose screen required hair dryers to dry the screen evenly. I had a, I'm just going to leave that one alone. That's just crazy. If you see somebody painted and drying the screen with a hair dryer, bottom line is, they were doing that way back in 2009. That's how old these videos are. So someone's making it sound like they're the ones actually, the first one that came with the idea, no. Drying the screen with a hair dryer was way back in 2009, around that era. And they did that basically to dry the screen evenly across. Now, if you're doing any form of paints that we have today, that is not required. But for what they were using back then, it was a requirement because the product was very thin. Now, in this demonstration right here, they're going to tell you to put an equal, uh, um, what do you call it? A, um, oh man, what's the word they use for that? What you have to put on there for? Hold on. Yeah, put a little bit on. Thanks. I can play this with no problem. This is a tutorial video. An equal application. So what we do at first is we okay. take our base coat and we pour approximately 200 milliliters to the tray. I'll put the link where you can watch the video on how you had to paint the screen. Put again, just very lightly. See how you put the roller in? the surface of the roller. Paint, not too much. Overload it or soak it just on the surface. Do you see how much time he took to dip in that roller? This is how it had to be done. You had to lift it up. 
Start from the bottom, top, go all the way down. Robot formation. This is how a screen had to be painted back then. By the time it took for him to dip that roller, I could have had the screen white by now. But that's what that really did. So every time you point it up, you can stop, raise it up, put it back down. Making sure you never get stuck the roller on the surface of the screen when you're doing the finishing strokes. This is the base coat. This is not the actual screen, just to let you know. There you go. This is the base coat. You still got three more coats to go. Not out of that paint. That's the base coat. And then there, that's the uh, base coat. Then there's a top coat. And there's a finisher. It's all the stuff you got to do. And we're talking about for something at that time when Goose Screen came out, they were around something like $800 a quart when they first came out. Just one layer. After rolling your first layer of base coat, what you should be doing is placing your roller in a plastic bag or some other covering of some sort. Now you said after painting up. your first layer. Whilst you uh, dry your first layer of base coat, um, this prevents you from having to clean the, the texture characteristic you're looking for when you're rolling the screen. You need a roller that would give you a similar texture to this. It's a very slight eggshell texture. You have to look for a certain texture. Can, There's a hair dryer. There's a hair dryer. Accelerate the drying of each coat between layers. Um, you can use the air dryer for a screen this size to um, dry the screen in approximately five minutes, and now, then I would suggest waiting 10 or 15 minutes. The reason why it has the hair dryer because you're not done yet. So that's the first base coat. So then you have to go in with a hair dryer to speed up the process so the screen can drive even faster so you can put the second and third on. So you're not done yet. You're just speeding up the process. That's all. Minutes, so that it finished healing a bit, and then you can go on to apply the next. There you go. So there's your next coat on. Top coat. Okay, Look how carefully he pours it in. And you use the same technique. Look how he rolls it in. You have to put a perfect application on the roller. And you can't, when you paint the screen, you can't press too hard on it and you can't be too light. Too much of it staying in the roller itself. Now you're going to repeat, repeat, repeat that same process that you did on the first one, the second one. Let's speed that up. Screen. It's three minutes. You see, I'll put the demonstration at the bottom for you to watch it. Top coat, which is translucent, 
Now this is not the slander they're coming away, it's to show you exactly how you had to paint a screen. Drive with a hair dryer, you'll notice that it gets whiter and whiter and whiter looking. What's happening is, is that the ingredients inside the screen view product are draining of water and they're getting more and more scattering and more and more reflective. So they're, they're gathering from around the room and they're scattering light into different angles. So you get a very opaque looking but light scattering surface. And what we have here is a still wet um, digital gray face coat and digital gray light top coat screen. Um, we have one dry area over here and the rest of the screen is still wet. Um, when the screen dries, the texture that you see when it is wet will shrink by a factor of four to one. So there will be a lot less texture. What will happen is the surface will seal over and then the acrylic will begin to seal and dry and the water will still, have, will still be in there. We'll have to leach out through micropores in the surface of the acrylic. The acrylic will remain slightly milky because of the water and will be at the milkiest on the second day. And then it will slowly clarify. Because it is a slow setting acrylic resin, that is one of the base ingredients, it will take up to six months to fully clarify, but it will did you hear what he just said? He said it would take fully. So inside that screen, there's water. The water is constantly curing from the screen, which means it's drying. It will take up to six months for that screen to fully dry. Let's see. When did he say this? I'll put the time. Just six months to fully clarify, but it's one of the base ingredients. It will take up to six months to fully clarify, but six months to fully clarify which means six it months that's going to be curing if somebody walks in bumps that thing touches it you're going to do that process all over again yes this is how it was somebody came and touched your screen and people would snap your Six months to dry. That's when it takes approximately six months to dry. So when you first start off because it's going to be wet and then as the months go by it will start getting lighter and will start to improve. Yep. I wasn't joking with you when I told you. Yeah, you had to wait up to six months to paint a screen. When it took me probably less than no time at all to paint this one. I'm going to leave that running. So I'm going to go downstairs. We're going to paint a supreme black, which requires no borders and none of that stuff whatsoever. That's our surface right there. There is my black technology right there. There's my roller. Now I'll show you the well, like I told you before. When it comes to this day and age with the technology we have in projectors, it should not be a problem to be able to paint a screen in no time at all. Screen should be used in fully lit environments. If you're watching demonstration at any given time, if someone's turning out the lights, they should be doing that for a movie demonstration only, all right, to give you off that movie kind of environment effect. But all the rest of those videos need to be done with the lights on because this is where we're supposed to be at when it comes to technology. We're not supposed to be sitting in the dark. People now, they want projectors to replace their TVs, and that's what they want now. They want to be using a fully lit environment. They don't want the windows blocked out. They don't want to go through any of that nonsense. So we're going to be using a black technology right here, a Supreme Black. This is on sale on our website right now. And I'll show you how we paint screens. So there's no even application of that stuff that's needed. Take your roller. That's basically about it. So we know we don't do any of that. And the squeaky roller is there. I just put some WD-40 on this and never got around to doing it. I should have put a little more on there. A little bit more on there. We're going to do a paint and dry today.
As you can see, we are all over the place. And the reason why these screens are designed this way because the everyday Joe, and some people, like I said, they'll tell me going to do it. Look, I'm not a professional painter. I've never painted a wall before. I've never painted a screen before. And they're going to be nervous about it. They're going to be very nervous about it. But the whole object is to design a project, a product that's going to have fast results. And it's good. the customer doesn't have to wait too long to have the screen painted in. And you don't have to be a freaking rocket scientist to do it. You want to do up and down? Here you go. It's up and down. Done. I can paint all my screens in my home with no problem and be done with it. That's how fast it should take you to paint a screen in. I'll do a comparison with the white wall. I always do those too. Four K fish YouTube. There you go, done. And my screen is still wet. That's how fast the technology reacts to a projector that quick, that fast, and the screen is that wet. And keep in mind, it's going to get brighter than this because as that screen starts to dry, they get lighter, but they still remain black. But that's how long it should take you to paint the screen in. Or back then, you had to go through tons of instructions, you had to go through painting the uh putting even applications and this is where how we got banned from avs forms because like i said everybody was following the tradition of goose screens and all the other companies they're putting these even applications on the roller the up and down robot formations all this stuff and we just came and went, bah, 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 bam done and they didn't like that but that debunked everything that they were teaching everybody else how to do and we came in and showed them how to do it for better which they didn't like that at all got complex disorder we got banned. It also debunks the theory that black screens where our technology comes up too dark because you're watching the screen right there. You're watching me. I paint it and dry that screen in no time at all, in real time. No border is required because the screen is black. So you don't need borders. 
There you go. I'll get you a little closer to the screen. So this makes it easier for our customers because our customers do not want to be sitting there reading through instructions, doing calculations, trying to figure out exactly what to mix and how to mix and how to apply it. And then waiting the typical six months. The goose ring took uh, six months to dry, not mighty brighty, but they all had a certain drying time on how the screen had to be dried and how it had to be applied. People didn't want to go through that nonsense. And then after everything, when you're done with all that, you are still sitting in the dark with your screen. Which I said before, because of the technology advancement we have in projectors today, no screen should be sitting in the dark. You watch me. I can walk through my entire house. Right now, i got a 135-inch screen firing off in one room. I can walk around my house. All my screens will be on, lit up. So we have all this advanced technology in projectors. How come the screens haven't caught up yet? Now, for those of you who are curious about painting this on a wall, because this is actually painted over styrofoam, I have demonstrations of me painting this on walls, plexiglass, sheetrock, motorized projection screens, fixed frame screens. My friend did a couple of fixed frame screens in the demonstration. Like I said, it's a very easy application. You just roll it on and you're done. That's it. That's how easy it is to apply. It. I have some people calling about bringing a professional painter. Save your money. Do it yourself. It's very easy to do. You will not mess it up. Completely foolproof. You want that jet black OLED screen? And some people say, well, what if the image is too dark? You know what? Look at this right here. Can't get any more real than live. So our Friday, when well, is Friday? Sorry, our Christmas sale is going to be ending on the 26th. Please keep in mind that the blackout cloth that does come with those kits is considered to be a free gift from our company. Um, that will be removed once the 27 hits and prices will go back to normal. Just want to put that out there really quick. Our next ship out date will be probably Friday. Um, so we'll start getting ready and getting set up for that. As a matter of fact, I got to order more containers because I am out. Beautiful ladies, 4K. I can show you the contrast levels all day, but that'd be that'd be pointless due to the fact that you're supposed to be watching black levels. Like I said, if you're watching screens that are displaying gray, when I show up my gray screens, I show all contrast levels. When I show black screens, I show off all white levels.
time is extremely fast. Sorry about that. video gotta have a lot of confidence in your work when you can do this dark star 9 right there so not only did I paint my screen in of course they're gonna keep going off I'm gonna go get more sticky for this but I can take my product right to the door and put it against a certified screen with no problem Parallax, Parallax. Parallax right there. So that's why I said that when we do our demonstrations, my panel demonstrations, I don't follow everybody else. I don't do that whole um, uh, setup where you, I'm, I'm, my, number one, I'm going to show you how fast it is to paint my technology. Do it in a fully lit room. I can swap my projectors out if I choose, and I can put them against certified projection screens. So, so far over here, we can get them to stay. Try to press down a little harder. I want to put down. This is a very heavy, heavy tape. So we have over here. We have uh, we have a dark star nine at three thousand dollars. We have daylight parallax or parallax. What I'm saying, parallax or parallax. What I'm saying it incorrectly. I apologize. That goes for five thousand dollars. We have the great summer five day fourteen hundred dollars, thirteen to fourteen hundred dollars. So I'll take you for and do demonstrations. I don't do anything. That everybody else does. So where's my remote control? Right? Here we go. Let's begin on this one again. So anytime you do a paint on demonstration, first things first, I feel how it should be done. That first, you must show the difference between, well, actually you must show the, how easy to apply the screen. Now, number two, the drying time. Number three, exactly how the screen does compare to other high-end screens, which uh, that's why I have a kitchen drawer full of this stuff to begin with. And then you have to show the difference between your projector at 43 added than to the 1,000 lumens, which I have behind me is my 1,000 projector, which I'm gonna fire up, and this demonstration is done.
Okay. Color red. Color red. I stand correct when I say the PS4 brings up much faster. There's color red. Color blue. Color blue. Those of you who choose to use the white wall as projection screen, well, there you go. That's what you get right there. You get a faded washed out image. Color green. Thank you. Starfield screensaver. I have down at the bottom, I have a 16,000 to one contrast projector I thought against here. You're not gonna see it. So this is the advantage points right here. Black screens can pull high white levels and they do have the capability of pulling contrasts, contrast level that these screens can never ever think about doing. Contrasts, contrast level that these screens can never ever think about doing. OLED beta fish. So we have $5,000, $1,400, $3,000. And the screen that was painted on, well, now for the sale, I think it's around $120 something dollars. Once the sale ends, about $148. And keep in mind, the projector we're using behind us is a Chrissy 4300 Lumens, uh, 1920 by 1200 WXGA. Oh, man down. Let me get back up. I use that heavy, heavy tape. It still wants to come down. Let's get you back up there. Need you up there for a shorty bit. That's basic it. Okay. A little crooked, but eh, it's all way too crooked. That's bad when things are crooked. Because then you'll have people saying, well, the screen's crooked. And that's affecting the screen's capability. No, it does not affect the screen's capability. The screen's crooked. <sighs> I want somebody once tell me that basically every time you go in and change the settings on your projector, you're fully calibrating your projector. Now all these screens are supposed to be ambient light rejection. If your screen is ambient light rejection, you should have no problem with the color fading or washing out. That shouldn't be a problem at all if it's designed to reject light. Because light is the one thing that's going to cause your screen to wash out and fade. So if it is true ambient light rejection technology, you should not be having a problem. And then you'll have some that'll argue and say, well, you got too much lighting in your environment. That is not an argument you want to start off with. There's another one dropping. I don't think they want to be there. Honestly, don't think they want to be there. Nope, they don't want to be there. They don't have to be there. Let me get these demonstrations done. Come on. I swear, that is some heavy, sticky Velcrome. And it just feels like the screens have a personality of their own. Like, we just do not want to. Now, the strong points that have in screens or other screens that can pull heavy contrast levels is the fact that you really don't have to spend the extra money to get a projector because it has a high contrast capability. And if you spend the money for a projector that has a contrast capability, you'll never see it. Never, ever see it. You think you're seeing a dark level. You're not seeing a black level. You're seeing gray. Now, we all know that OLED's backgrounds are always done in black. If you bought an OLED TV and the background came up in gray, I think you would be taking that back to the store to get your money back. Now keep in mind, we already know that these screens are going to produce a higher white level than my technology, but the thing about my technology is, like I said, I like the fact, it's not, it doesn't bother me that somebody tried to paint the picture that our technology comes up so dark that you can't see it. Because now what it does is for us, it actually allows us to build off of that to show that 
we can debunk that theory by showing that our technology doesn't do that. And again, <laughs> they don't like to be on the screen. Put it back up. I'm using heavy Velcro sticky tape, like, you pressing in on this, right? Doesn't want to stay there. So if our screens came up so dark that you couldn't see them, well, you wouldn't be able to see it, period. It's just bottom line. And that's against three certified screens. I think one has a zero point. Yeah, this one right here has a 0 0.8 gain. This one has a 0 0.9 gain. Now, if you notice, our screens pull better color, better contrast, and the white levels are high enough where the screen's not going to come out so dark that you can't see it. And you can see it crystal clear. Now, the reason why I'm not really too upset about those demonstrations, and I'll tell you why, because now we can use particular demonstrations to judge other screens to see exactly where their standards lay when they're trying to develop black technology. Colors are supposed to be nice and bright. You can't pull white level, you can't pull bright colors. That's all to it. Contrast does not make bright colors. It's the white levels that do it. So I think from now on, when we do these paint-on demonstrations, we're going to paint them, dry them, and then throw up these high-end screens against them. Because, like I said, in order to be able to design one of our screens, you're going to have to pass that 11 certified challenge. We're going to call it the 11 certified challenge. That's 11 certified screens against your technology. And that's a really hard thing to pull off. All the 17s, every last one of them passed it on 1 and 2% with no problem. So those, you're not going to see too much of those or hear too much about the 17s anymore. Um, like I said, um, they're going to start getting ready for paperwork process, and they're probably going to be out probably somewhere around 2021 um, before the summer, because I want to get them out before the summertime. If a lot of people are interested in some of the outdoor capabilities of that technology, especially rear projection, and they want to be able to use them um, for the summertime. No, nah. he's asking me that one account like no. So let's see how dark our screens come up compared to this demonstration. Mind you, as I said before, the standard that was given about our technology is the fact that it comes up so dark that you can't see images. So that's what we're going for by now on. Anytime we bring out any form of black technology, the standard would be for that the screen has to be to produce an image high enough, a white level high enough, that you can actually physically make out the difference between the two objects. You can see the car under the car, you can see the grab one of the car, you can see the blue ocean in the background, the red fire hydrant, two through three females in the background. You can see their individual clothes, hair color, everything. In order to do that, a screen, a black screen, has to pull a white level. Now, someone can easily say, "Well, the certified screens are pulling a higher white level." That is true, but as you see, as in our technology, we're pulling the same white level also too that you can see the screen. But we can pull a contrast level, and they can't. So we have an advantage point on two levels. Look, you see the TLC on the vehicle?
So as it says in the description on the 12, when you go to the website, it clearly says at the bottom that white levels will be a tad low, but nothing that will disrupt your picture quality. That's why before coming down here, I displayed it on a 135 inch upstairs and a fully lit environment to show you that when I come down here and display it here, I can't have someone come and say, well, it's on a smaller screen. We just did 135 upstairs. There you go. Some screens can produce so high of a white level you lose detail. You have to have contrast to pull detail. What am I going to do with my styrofoam projection screen? Oh, that's a test screen. I'm not going to do anything with it. All right. <sighs> That's done. Right there. Finished up. What, 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 and all that good enough. So, right here, we take these off my screen. There we there. So we're certified up there. The screen's nice and dry. Amazing test issue. Have I done this one already? No, I have not done this one. Now, if I were to lay any one of the screens up there, you know what's going to happen. They're not going to be to pull any of this contrast on the screen. Matter of fact, let's make this interesting. Let's get rid of the 43 behind me. Let's bring up the Sony 1000 lumen projector that has 0% contrast capabilities. All right, so we're going to swap out real quick. Let's swap it out for this one, and then we're done. mind i explain to customers just because we do tests on the thousand lumen projector if you look at the specifications on the screen it gives you a specification of what projector you use please read through the specifications before placing your order mine is an old projector and it takes a while it's an old time projector Focus right there. Yeah, this is also on my screen size right there. Focus to come a little better. Here we go. I think I got it better, I'm not sure. Uh, that's good. Let's rewind it some more. Go back. Let's play. There we go. There's no sound to this. This is on my Sony projector right here. At only uh, 1,000 lumens, uh, the projector is 20p, 600 by 800 res, and the contrast ratio on this projector is zero.
happens if we get part of the wall with it. Well, let's see what happens. There you go. The wall can't pick up contrast. It doesn't have that capability. If it did, we would need to buy a projection screen. This projector only does 4.3, just to let you know. Sorry about that. Let's just show you how back my projector sits on the screen in a fully lit environment. At a thousand lumens. And as you see in the background, walls are fully lit as it's supposed to be from corner to corner. All this is supposed to be illuminated. You can see this nice and bright in here. So in their demonstration, they give you detailed instructions on how to paint a screen. My demonstration, we go from painting the screen in no time at all, no pros needed, drying the screen as the screen was being displayed with, with the video. Then we did the high performance certified screens from the high performance certified screens. We went in and did swap projector swap out, which shows that we don't have to depend on a 4300 lumen projector to show up the demonstration. I can push right over to a thousand lumen projector and there you go. That's how you're supposed to be seeing demonstrations when it comes to screen paints or projection screens. The reason why they're not going to show you that because they fear at any given time, the setting may not be right. Mind you, everything is pre-rehearsed. So you just can't take, just do things as you go. There's going to be a problem there. What if the screen doesn't react right? What if the projector doesn't react right? Some of the um, products that they make are not, have to be used with projectors of 3,000 and 4,000 lumens to guarantee that the image is going to show up perfect every single time. So you can't do a projector swap out. And they're definitely not going to put a high performance screen laying against their screen because the results could be bad. Because their product could fail. So like I said, you have to have a lot of confidence in your product to do a demonstration like this. That's why I said before you go and buy from us, do your research, find out how many people do demonstrations like this, and then you come back and give us a call. out date is going to be it should be friday friday because she said she has friday off now so it should be friday we have our next ship out date i'll do one more for you one more for you. One more for you. Ugh. All right. Ugh. I'll bring out my Pentasonic. My friend came over and was like, do you have projectors like all over the house? I was like, yeah, I pretty much do. I have projectors like all over the house. Like in my kitchen cabinets, I have like projectors in my kitchen cabinets. So people come in and open up a cabinet like, why is your projector? Like, I don't know. They open another like three or four projectors sitting in cabinets. I never know when I'm gonna need them. I'll go all the way down to the basement to pick them up. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do another projector swap out real quick. We're gonna bring in the Panasonic at 1500 lumens with a 16,000 to one contrast. Ugh. 
as you can see, even if you had the projector of 800, I mean the projector of 600 by 800, the 1000 lumen projector that doesn't have any form of contrast, you're going to pick up a contrast regardless. This is the beautiful thing about this technology when it comes to our darker screens, is the fact that you don't have to worry about the contrast levels because the screen is black. All right, so let's grab this one right here. Swap this out for this one. Put another one in. Now this is, you have a projector. Say if you got a projector, more up-to-date model projector, you know, got this over here, the Panasonic. This is a full 1080p projector. Let me count on here, it's just 1500 lumens, right? So let's throw that one over here. Let me see if I can find my panel. Turn it on. I'll let that one cool off. Hmm. There we go. And that's the Panasonic at around, I think it's 1500 lumens, full 1080p at 16,001 contrast. This one doesn't have sound either. Sorry about that. And now, what we'll do is, if I can figure out where exactly where I put it at. All right. Starco demonstration. Starfield screensaver. This is what we're going to do. Put in a Starfield screensaver. All right. We're going to take our projector at 16,000 to 1 contrast. You should, some people feel that you should be to pull a, um, they're going to be to see a contrast level. So what we're going to do is, we're going to come over here and we move our projector all the way up. All right. We're going to see if we can see. There's a Starfield demonstration right there on the screen. So you can see. So, say if you have this projector behind me at 16,000 to 1 contrast, that's pretty good for a projector at 16,000. And you have one of these screens, which are going to tell you that you're going to be able to pull up a contrast level with 16,000 to 1. As I told you before, does it make a difference if you spend Five thousand dollars for your screen. You can't pull a contrast level. They can't see black. Dark star nine. That's why we always request a star to a demonstration because you can't get no black within outer space. You just can't. This is 16,000 to 1. 16,000 in contrast. It's not going to pull up. You can't pull up. It's impossible. Here, I'll show you something more interesting. Quick, this has nothing to do with it, but you know what, guys? You know me by now. I have a habit of doing this kind of stuff all the time. So, you know, I kind of like to throw a little stuff in there. And the video, you know, just for kicks and giggles for fun, you know. Then I always start about blasting. I'm just going to show you something real quick. Now, stare at this screen. 
That's a gray screen, correct? Right, gray screen. All right. That right there is a black silver. Black silver can read contrast. Bring my shit that little bit more. These screens are darker than that screen you just saw, right? There you go. Our gray screens can pull a heavier contrast in these screens. You know why? Because our screens are old. That's why. When I was telling people, I, I, I'm not going to go back to that. I'm just beating a dead horse to death if I even try to go back to explain that. This is what I was telling you about having the ability to teach a screen how to read color and code. And for some people say, oh, but that's virtually impossible. Well, you just saw a light gray screen go against three certified screens and pull a heavier contrast level on a star field demonstration on a screen that's gray because our screens even though they're gray they can read a contrast level like that black 17 that can pull an insane white level even though the screen is actually three times darker than a 12 or how blues can basically read color it has nothing to do with the surface it has nothing to do with this it's code inside embedded in the technology that's the problem. People are still thinking about the surface. It has nothing to do with the surface anymore. It's what's within the screen. What you're doing is when you take a projector, you're bouncing it off the surface. It's talking about going beyond the surface, going within the surface and reading a code that tells the projector, hey, look, I'm seeing black just like you're seeing black, so I'm displaying black. Where these screens don't have any form of code and what they're seeing is gray because they can't see black. That's it. All right, thank you all for your time. I have to go, and God bless.